By the time we get to the 1870s and the establishment of the Second Empire, which was led by Prussia, the two sets of identities for engineers were already beginning to emerge. On the one side, the claim to be doing professional engineering work in the German context was in part a direct extension of the practice and the trades, which, which had been built on apprenticeship training and, and the celebration of practical knowledge. But on the other side, the emergence of engineering research at the higher technical institutes was in part a direct extension of the French emphasis on theory, but very importantly here, in a do different sort of way. Scientific technology, the German concept of scientific technology, involved an attempt to find abstract means of describing practical activities and practical knowledge. It was an idealization of practice rather than an attempt to derive practice from fundamental principles. Let's listen again. Let's listen to Mangold again. I'm quoting. Germans stressed that one had to reach an equilibrium between mathematical scientific knowledge and methods on the one side and the knowledge and ability in constructive technology on the other constructive technology referring to the actual practice of building technologies, which latter, namely constructive technology, they saw as a, a freely creative activity, emphasizing that mathematics and mechanical principles alone cannot lead to a construction actually carried out." End quote. Now, as, as Gispin explains, by the 1870s, the higher technical institutes had actually become more like universities than the original governmental supporters uh, had intended. In their effort to build institutions that, that, like universities, actually contributed to societal progress through the advancement of reason, making engineers then, like philosophers and like natural scientists, actually architects of human progress, these faculty had, had de-emphasized the goal of contributing directly to industry and to economic development. This would change under the Second Empire and the two new emperors, Kaiser William I and William II. Now, the major point here for engineering is that the set of relationships that were positioning engineers altered again as the meanings of quality, progress, and nationalism changed. In other words, the source of progress gained a new site, namely industry. The Prussian-led empire marked the achievement of German unification for the first time, not simply as a, as a loose confederation of states or, or an empire with an umbilical cord back to Rome. Under the Kaisers, Industry became valued. It became valued as a key vehicle for the achievement of a unified nation. And so the German story of the late 19th and of the early 20th centuries becomes a story of this incredibly fast emergence of new industry, especially the steel industry and the chemical industry, industries that were providing basic materials for other industries both inside and outside of Germany. The German chemical industry, for example, became the strongest in the world rather quickly. By World War I, actually, the German production of dyes, or dye stuffs, was so dominant that all the uniforms for all the soldiers on both sides of the war were dyed with chemicals that came from the German chemical industry. So. With this emergence of German industrial power, the development of quality new materials in industry, the development of new products and new technologies gained an association with the German concept of progress. So in other words, the unfolding of German spirit, of German Geist, the increasing quality of German ideas, of German mind spirit, could now be found in the actual physical and material existence of quality technologies and quality products. It's this, this emphasis, importantly, contrasted sharply with the developing emphasis in the United States, 
which had already, uh, which, in which was already emerging a distinctive style that was dedicated to the production of low-cost goods for mass use. Progress in that context was tied increasingly to uh, standards of living, higher standards of living for the masses. In Germany, by contrast, the emphasis was on quality. Industry was now providing an emerging site for progress. And engineers thus found themselves newly valued, directly identifiable for the first time by these combined images of quality, progress, and nationhood. The engineers themselves came to praise their own achievements as national ones, and themselves as pioneers of German value and of German culture. The rise of industry also cast a new spotlight on technical training. Consider some examples here. In 1879, authority over the Institutes of Technology was transferred from the Ministry of Commerce to the Ministry of Education. They became part of education. This was an important move. Technical training was now genuine education. As Mangold put it, quote, the task and position of the institutes, the technical institutes, were being evaluated from their results with increasing political emphasis at a time when the industrial sector of the economy began finally to gain the upper hand and German policy turned to the movement of European imperialism. In other words, industrial development and technical education were now gaining national political importance. Continuing now, quoting, Indeed, since the foundation of the Second Empire, the Institutes of Technology had known an unmistakable growth in prestige in all these matters. So the, high, as the higher technical institutes, institutes are now becoming a focus of national attention. And as Gispin explains, by the end of the 19th century, the higher technical institutes abandoned any pretense that they were training classical scholars and teaching higher culture, somehow emulating the universities. Also marking this new importance granted to industry, and in 1899, William II granted the higher technical institutes equal status to universities. Finally, they gained the status alongside. They're able to take their place alongside the universities. Now, the new business leaders, such as the machine builders and the steel makers, actually were resisting this change because they feared losing technical training to the classical arts. They didn't want uh, emerging students, graduates, to be, to be like those graduates of the universities. But from the 1890s, uh, 1880s actually, through the early 1900s, the higher technical institutes became somewhat more practical, oriented towards technology and in the German context, techniques. Gispin explains, for example, that they were de-emphasizing higher mathematics on which the French were focusing in favor of graphical methods of analysis rather than equations, graphics rather than equations. 